Okay, um, the last thing that I'm going to show you how to do is how to make a hypsometric tint. So it's pretty clear that just a hillshade or just the tint don't really work, but together they're pretty nice. So if we want to turn this DEM from a black through a gray to a white to kind of more earthy looking tones, we're going to go into our project properties. And we get this very complicated looking kind of diagram here. Um, and it's not to be, you know, don't worry too much about it. Um, you'll slowly work into it. Um, right now we've got a single band gray, but what we really want is a single band pseudo color. And it just means that we're going to stretch color values across these pixels. So I go to single band pseudo color. And right now I've got my aspect um, color scheme up. But I think what I want to do is I'm going to go down here and make a new color ramp. And I'm going to, it's going to be a gradient. I don't want to use any of these other things. Gradient means it's going to go across um, from one color to another. So it might start in blue and then I choose blue and, um, you know, dark blue and dark green and it goes through um, blue green. Or I choose red and yellow and it goes through orange to get to yellow. So I'm going to choose the gradient, and aha, here we go. We're already starting it. The gradient goes from blue to green, and it kind of goes through this teal color. Well, that's not going to make my pixels look very good. So I think what I might do is start at a, um, let's see here. Let's start at a green that's like a dark green, like this. Um, or you know what? It's the coast, so why don't we make it kind of a... Here's our hue, saturation, and value. I'm going to make it a gray, desaturated gray, like that, kind of for the rocky coastline. Um, so that's the gray. And eventually, when it gets up to the top, I want it to be a light green. But that's not good enough. I want other stops in between uh, before it goes gray straight to light green. So I'm going to add some stops, multiple stops. And when I add a stop, it's going to ask me, where do you want this stop to be? Which, where do you want me to put this color? And the middle would be 50%, one quarter is 25, three quarters is 75. So you kind of get the idea. I'll add three stops. My first stop is going to be um, from gray. I think I'm going to go right to a dark green like that. So gray to dark green. And I'm going to add this at 25%. And okay, gray to dark green, very nice. I'm going to go from dark green to kind of a very, um, I don't know, maybe a, 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 a tan. I think tan might look nice. So at 50%, um, you know what, maybe we'll go straight to 70%. I'm just going to have two stops. I don't want this to get too complicated. So I'm going to go gray, green, and then I'll add one more stop. And this is going to be a tan color. And tan is just a desaturated um, orange. So that looks pretty good to me. I say OK. And I'm going to put it at, let's just say, 65%. Um, yeah, nothing magical. Doesn't look too good. Um, maybe I changed my mind. I'll go back here and make this 50. This is what cartography is all about. It's about just fussing around and coming up with what you think is attractive. So gray to dark green to tan. Um, you know, I might actually decide to add a stop at 75%. That is a stronger green. So I'm going to add one more stop. Let's call this like just a strong green. Okay, at 75. And I say, all right. And we've got this kind of funny um, hypsometric tint, which changes based on elevation. And and sometimes you sh you know you should usually try to inform your tints based on the region that you're mapping. If there's a lot of forest around, um, you know, use more greens. If there's a lot of vegetation, if it's grassland, maybe tans or yellows, that kind of thing. So I say, OK, and I'm going to call this, um, let's just call it ramp one. It's a color ramp is what it is. And right now it's in continuous and it says, OK, here's the min and the max. Um, I know that's actually not true. The max is higher. And you might say, well, why would it give us less than the max? Well, the way it's going to spread colors right now is that it's cutting off the lowest 2 and the highest 2%. And it's trying to get rid of the extremes in the data set. 
So if, um, I, I'm going to go with min max where it uses the actual minimums and maximums. And I'm going to load those values. Watch these up here, min and max. When I load the true min and max, yep, there, they changed, right? And now I can hit classify. And there my colors come in like that. And there aren't actually classes. Like there won't be a line between gray and green, right? It's continuous. It's going to go between all of the colors. It's just giving me an example of when I have this color, this is the value that I'm going to tr that it's going to try to um, symbolize it at, and then true green will be at 120.357, whatever that is. Um, not doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, this is all just for aesthetics, so it's okay to fuss around here. Um, I'm going to say apply and see what comes out. Okay, I think this is pretty ugly <laughs> but it's okay um, it's an example and you can see how the entire ocean is gray um, what I would say is that usually your ocean should probably be a shapefile of just water and the shapefile will actually go on top of this so that we have a crisp shoreline right um, if I was to just add a hill shade on top of this right now Right, and I make the hill shade semi transparent. Go to properties and let's make it transparent near 60 something. And yeah, as you start to get the sense of okay, you know, for a 20 second map, at least I've got a feel for the landscape now. Right, I would not like these colors um, in the long run just because you know, I know that these mountains don't have grass or kind of a tan color they're not sandy and the colors don't really represent the landscape very well so try to be conscious of how you use your color and that kind of thing um, but that's how you make a hip symmetric tint in QGIS and uh, you'll have to experiment with that that dialog box and combine it with a hill shade and you know there's also uh, a um, contour mapper so try out the contour tool as well um, you know there are a lot of options for making a map and in this week's tutorial I'll lead you through how to make a very good terrain map but I want you to experiment for now okay good luck